Hey, Chris here from Llama Academy. Here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Progress bars are very prevalent in video games. I don't know if there's something with just trying to make their seem like there's player progression or what the deal is, they're just everywhere. You can have progress bars for health. You can have them for displaying how much time is left or the progress through a round. You can have them to show the stats of a gun, maybe one gun has particularly high damage, so you have a progress bar that's almost full. For those of you looking for the really quick answer on how to do this, you don't need the full explanation. All we're going to do is take an image component on the UI canvas. We're going to set it to type filled, and then we're going to adjust the progress of that image to make it fill the progress bar. You can, of course, do this with radial progress bars or with linear progress bars or any other type of fill mode that's available on the image. And then you can play with your sprites and your borders to get different effects. Before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. If you want to join this esteemed lot, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose which support tier you're most comfortable with, and start getting some of the cool perks like getting your name up here on this section and getting a voice shout out starting at the awesome supporter level. Speaking of those awesome supporters, I have Raphael, Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, and Autumn K. I'm so grateful for your support. Thank you. In this scene, I have a background image and three progress bars. They don't do anything yet, but let's look at how they're structured because that's really important. On this top one, I have a simple square sprite with a image type of filled from a fill method horizontal, fill origin left. You'll notice that the border is a child of this one because I want the border to render on top of that progress image. If I have it render the other way, then the progress image kind of overlaps the border and it doesn't look right. For the circle one, we have it a little bit different. The root object is actually the border in this case, and the child object is the fill amount. That's because on this one, I want the fill amount to go on top of the border. And this one we'll see is a filled radial 360 from the top image. The last one is very similar to the top one, except we have a border that goes all the way around instead of just on the sides. The root image here is the progress fill because again, we want it to be underneath that border. The border image in this case is a simple square and we've nine sliced the image with a sprite editor. And you'll notice I have one pixel extra here. If you put these guidelines exactly where the color stops, it doesn't look right. It kind of scales the image improperly and you get this fade kind of effect that is not what I'm looking for. So that's why I'm leaving this extra pixel space here. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio and start writing our progress bar. We'll start as usual with creating a bunch of private serialized fields. We'll start with a private image that comes from the Unity Engine.UI namespace. We'll call it progress image. That's going to be the image that we're going to animate for our progress bar. We'll do a float default speed set to 1F by default. That'll be how fast we should animate this progress bar. And a unity event that is of type float on progress. That'll be an event that we will raise every time that the progress bar updates. That way we can subscribe to whenever these updates happen and do something like maybe update text every time that the progress bar makes progress. We'll do another Unity event called on completed that will raise after the progress bar has completed animating. I'm using the Unity events for these last two because that's much easier to use in the inspector. But if you don't really like to use the inspector for that kind of thing and you would prefer to use delegates, you can make it look like this instead. Finally, we'll do a private coroutine animation coroutine, and that'll be all the variables that we're going to set up. On start, we're going to just make sure that the progress image type is set up correctly. We'll check if progress image .type does not equal to image .type .filled. If it doesn't, then we're going to just log an error saying that this object's progress image is not of type filled, so it cannot be used as a progress bar, disabling this progress bar. And then we're going to do this dot enabled equals false. We're also going to define an overloaded method here called public void set progress. The first implementation is going to accept just float progress. And what it's going to do is call the different overloaded method called set progress that accepts the speed. And by default, we'll pass that default speed. This is really just a convenience for whenever you use this. If you want it to use the default speed, you only have to provide the progress. You don't always have to provide some speed. So let's define that second option there with public void set progress that accepts a float progress and a float speed. And that one will check if the progress is less than zero or greater than one. Again, we're going to log a warning this time saying that invalid progress was passed. We expected a value between zero and one and we got some other number and that we're going to clamp that value to something between zero and one with progress equals mathf.clamp01 progress. All that does is if you pass like a negative number, it'll clamp it to zero. And if you pass something greater than one, it's going to clamp it to one. 
The second thing we'll do is check if the progress does not equal the progress image dot fill amount. That way we're not doing any extra work if it's already the same progress. If the animation coroutine is not null, we will stop that animation coroutine. And then we will do animation coroutine equals start coroutine, animate progress, passing in the progress and the speed. Now let's go ahead and define that coroutine function, animate progress with private i enumerator, animate progress that accepts a float progress and a float speed. In here we'll define a float time to equal zero and a float initial progress to equal progress image dot fill amount. While time is less than one, we'll do progress image dot fill amount equals mathf dot lerp from the initial progress to the desired progress, passing in the time variable for the t. So if the initial progress is zero, progress is one, it will go from zero to one over one second by default. Then we'll do time plus equals time dot delta time times the speed, which the default speed we have is one. That's where I'm getting that one second from. We'll then do on progress question mark dot invoke progress image dot fill amount. The question mark just is like checking if on progress is null and then it won't do anything if it is null. If it's not null, then it will invoke that unity event. Or if you're using the delegate function, it's the exact same code to have right here. So there's no difference. And it'll invoke that unity event or that delegate function with the progress image dot fill amount here. Once we finally got through all the animation, we'll do progress image dot fill amount equals progress because maybe if you have the speed too high, it'll actually skip over landing on your desired fill amount. But we're just gonna make sure we fully hit that progress. We'll again invoke on progress Progress, just saying hey we finally reached the end and then we will also invoke the on completed which doesn't accept any arguments it's just saying hey this progress bar is done if we hop back to the unity editor I'm gonna select these progress bars and now we can see that the progress bar script has the progress image reference the default speed the on progress unity event and the on completed event we're gonna drag the image that we want to be animated to that progress image. And remember, it needs to be a filled type. So for this first one, it's gonna be the image that's attached to this progress bar. For the on progress, what I wanna do is update this text mesh pro text here that says loading with the current progress. So if I just show you what this is doing under the hood, there's a set text method that accepts a float and it's just setting the text of the text mesh pro text based on the text that it's getting there. So we'll add an on progress event drag the text updater to the object reference and say text updater dot set text using the dynamic float option here. And that'll automatically invoke the set text with whatever value on progress provides. That's perfect. Whenever it's completed, I want the text just to say complete. So I'll drag the text mesh pro text here and set the text mesh pro text UGUI dot text value to be complete. I'm gonna repeat this process for each progress bar. The second one's the only one that's a little bit different where we're gonna drag the image that is not on that progress bar. It's the sub image because it's going on top of that border for the second image. Everything else, we're gonna do the exact same process all the way through. If we then click play, we'll see this runtime GUI that I made just for the demo where I can adjust the speed that these progress bars will animate at. If I click the button, it will play the progress from zero to one, just so you can get a feel for how fast the different speeds are. You'll see as they play, the text updates with some percentage and eventually say complete at the very end. And these don't have to only go left and right and 360 from the top. You can do the same thing animating from the bottom on a vertical progress bar. You could have a circle that fills left to right or up to down, down to up. All of these fill methods will work. It's just a matter of providing the right sprite with the right border and having them layered on top of each other the appropriate way to get the look that you're looking for. That's how we can have a basic progress bar, but you can do things like layer these on top of each other to get different effects like what I used, for example, in my game. I had multiple progress bars stacked on top of each other to show different concepts of the level. You can, of course, create a custom script to manage three different images at a time, but I found it very easy to just use the three different progress bars that were layered on top of one another. This works with any image on the UI that you have, so you can use a custom shader. You don't have to use this particular one to get cool, like, effects going on on your progress bar while you have the fill amount going. As long as whatever shader you're using supports this fill mode, it'll work just fine. You can get all kinds of different effects as well, depending on how you set up the border and the fill image. You can do things like having a globe fill up if you use a circle, for example, instead of just the circle border like what I was using here. The linear progress ones across are the most common ones we'll see with like health bars and like progress for a gun stat, something like that. The only thing to be really careful with is since we're filling that image, if you don't have one that's like a basic shape like this, it can be very obvious that you're stretching an image and it might not look correctly inside of a border. So you may need some custom sprites for your progress bars if you're gonna have them like really wide and maybe not a linear shape. 
Let's use a practical example for that. If you're going to have a progress bar with rounded corners, generally use a sliced sprite for that. If you're going to then try to use a filled sprite, as that fills and it's a really wide one, let's say you just use a rounded square, that's not going to look right as you expand it across because it's going to be a pretty goodly wide rectangle one and you're going to get some holes on the progress bar. So for progress bars like that, if you're going to use rounded corners, make sure you make a custom sprite that's the correct size for whatever progress bar you're going to use for that rounded edges. Otherwise, it really doesn't look very good. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. There's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.